I got a packer cut brisket, fatty side, not fatty side. Has this thing here, says it's a quick rip. I don't know if that'll work or not. Not so quick. So I'll just uh, grab my trusty scissors, open this up, and oh yeah, okay, so a little bit of food safety, wash hands, and uh, I've, I've cleaned out the sink and the counter and the cutting board with a with a all-natural cleanser. You can go all-natural, you can use bleach, whatever you want to use, but uh, there we are. That's a quick rip. So there we are. So that's a packer cut, so you can get it at a discount from the uh, butcher. This was uh, 12, about 12 and a quarter pounds at $5.99 a pound. And you see lots of, lots of good meat in there. Lots and lots of good meat in there. And uh, a nice layer of fat that's going to be pretty awesome when, uh, when we get her going. I'm just going to rinse this off. And I'll be back with you in a second. Yeah, so it's all rinsed off. And uh, I've got my rub here. This is, a, this is a commercial rub. I usually make my own. That's another video. But for today, I don't have any of my own made, so I'm just going to use some commercial stuff. This one's uh, Smoky Paprika Chipotle. So. And to that, you want to throw in just a little bit of oil. Just enough that you can smear it on there pretty good. So maybe, what was that? Maybe two, three tablespoons. Just mix that up good. Makes almost like a paste once it's mixed up in. Hope you can see that. And once it's all kind of pasted up, you just start rubbing. Pretty easy. Look for the little cracks and stuff that you can fire stuff in. Make sure you get it all the way in, all the little spots. I'm doing the non fat side first. When I'm done, I'm going to put this on the smoker with fat side up because it'll have almost a self basting quality to it. It'll uh, hopefully that fat as it melts and renders it'll, uh, it'll get all down and be nice and nice and juicy. Keep everything nice and moist. That, that kind of what do they say fat is flavor. Well it sure is in this uh, in this particular smoking process. It, uh, it sure helps. So yeah, so you just get it all over, get in the little nooks and crannies, make sure you get a good, good load of rub right on there. And like I say, most of this fat's going to get cut off, but it's nice to have the rub in there because as it melts and as it kind of goes through, it'll take on some of the characters of that rub. You don't want to overpower it. You want the smoke to be the main flavor. And uh, like I say, I've got that pecan wood on there. So that'll be a nice, uh, not overpowering, but a nice smokiness to it. That'll be, uh, that'll be just really good. So there we are. That's all rubbed up. Ready to go. It doesn't take long at all. Now sometimes I have, before I've done a brined brisket, um, I find that the brined ones, for me, haven't turned out as well. Um, maybe that's just me. I don't know. But, uh, but for, for this, for low and slow, I find this works really well. There's a little bit of fatty tissue we can lose. So that's, uh, that's what we got for now. And I see the, uh, the smoker is up around 100 degrees. It'll soon be uh, ready to close those vents just a little bit. And we'll, uh, we'll move on from there. Okay, so the uh, temperature is uh, 169, coming up close to that 170, 170, coming up close to that 170, 175 mark. Should hold that up so as you can see it, I guess. Probably can't see it from there, but we'll try. And so I'm going to close down the vents. I don't know if you can see the smoker smoking behind me, but uh, she's just cooking along just dandy. So I'm going to shut down those vents, and we'll uh, we'll have a uh, we'll have it at temp in no time at all. Okay, so we're, uh, I hope you can see that. 
At the magic number, well, 226. 225 is what we're aiming for. So we've overshot a little bit. I'll just close the vents down a bit. But uh, once I open this, we'll lose a lot of that heat. Put the brisket on and, uh, and life will be cool. So, here we are. I'll go this side so I'm not blocking everything. And you can see, and I, I have the second half of that. Oh, look at that. I have the second half of that uh, smoke, uh, the temperature probe on the meat. Pop that on there. Try hard to make it fit. Keep it on the indirect side. There we are. Shut her down. I'll give her three hours in the smoke and then I'm going to wrap it in foil. I'll show you when that happens too. There we are. Now here's just one more tip in the middle of this video. Uh, you see how this is reading 223 right now. And when I look at this one, it's reading 200, a little less, well around 200. So the trick is these probes, these probes that, that measure, okay, what do we got? 225, right? So that's right on the money. I just have a little probe going in the top of the hole there. The other thing I notice is that there's a fair bit of smoke leakage from the seams. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a little bit of smoke leakage from the seams. They say that's not a good thing. I like to think that that just shows that there's smoke all over every bit of that meat and that it's all getting happy and wonderful in its uh, little environment there. So uh, there we are. Anyway, we'll check in in about three hours when, uh, when we can wrap it. Okay, well, it's been a little better than three hours. Uh, it's been holding steady at 225. And, oh, that's starting to look all right. Uh, next task is to wrap it. And the trick here is to wrap it really tightly in foil because we want any of the additional uh, fat that melts. So we want it all to kind of stay in there and just kind of make everything happy together. So just slide this underneath. It's a little warm. <laughs> Together. Whoa! We're in there. We're get it wrapped up as best we can here. And the tighter you make it, you want a nice tight seal if you can get it. The tighter you make it, the better it's going to absorb its own juices. I think I'll give it another wrap there just to make sure that things stay in. Okay, I got a little hole there, a little hole there. Bring this under. Now, size of that uh, size of that brisket. It, it, the brisket itself is sitting at 140 degrees right now. I want to make sure it gets to at least 160. Um, but the the key thing here is. You can probably see when I poke here, a lot of resistance. Everywhere you poke, there's a lot of resistance. So it's still that tight knot. And the trick with a brisket is to give it time, and enough time that 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 all that connective tissue, all that fibrous hard uh, hard stuff, it, it just hits a point where it just wants to relax. So we'll just be patient with it, and we'll give it time, and uh, sooner or later it'll pass the poke test. It's uh, 9.30. It's been resting for about a half hour. So I took it off at 9. I put it on at uh, around 3. So that's, uh, what's that, 7 hours? 6 and a half, something like that. Anyway, it, uh, it hit the temperature of 180. So I was happy enough with that. And off it came. So let's see how, uh, how we did here. See if we can't just get a... Oh, that looks actually pretty nice. I'm going to see if I can get a couple of nice thin slices here. 
Oh yeah, okay, a little bit of a smoke ring there. You can see smoke ring along the bottom edge there. That, uh, that doesn't look too bad at all. I think I'll, uh, I'll take it and let's, uh, let's just give it just a little, just because we can. Oh, that's perfect. It's moist. Nice smoky flavor, tender. It's very good. Anyway, try your own. It's um, it's a long project, but it's a good one. And we'll uh, talk to you later. Take care.